Homework from last day, number four. Sure. So which resistors are in series? This is a, a, a series means the same skiers go through them both. For example, V. Whoop, what the? Okay, okay, that's a, wow. What's going on here? You getting a little pink thingy there? Let's do this. Let's turn that back on again. And let's see if it's a little, there we go. That was a little weird. Okay. I think I saved it. Um, series means, uh, same skiers go through both. These two here are in series with each other because as I look at this, uh, the same skiers go through both of those. So I would say in terms of series, R7 and R8 are in series with each other. Can you find any more resistors where the same skiers have to go through and no more, no less, exactly the same skiers have to go through both? You see it, Sally? Yep. In other words, if I was analyzing this circuit, I could just add those two together and treat them as one. I could add those two together and treat them as one. The rest of these are all sorts of parallel. So this is, I mean, this is a nasty circuit. If they actually gave me this with numbers, it would take me a while to analyze it, unless they were nice enough maybe to give me total current and a lot of extra stuff somewhere along the way. Um, R2 is in parallel with both of those combined. R6 is in parallel with both of those combined. R5 is in parallel with this whole mess. Okay, is that all right? So that's the difference between series and parallel. Good question. Any others? So lesson five, and the title is uh, Mixed Resistor Circuits. All we're going to start doing is just practicing using Kirchhoff's laws and the rules for parallel and series resistors. So mixed resistors, mis, mi, mixed circuits have both series and parallel parts. And to solve them, first thing we're going to do is make sure, Sally, and this is why your question earlier was so nice, we want to make sure that we identify, let's make a nicer number one, Mr. Do it. First thing we do is we identify what's series and what's parallel because we're going to be using a different strategy for each of those. And then we're going to simplify the circuit to find total equivalent resistance, R total. And to do that, if they're in series, we just add them up. If they're in parallel, 1 over R parallel equals 1 over the first plus 1 over the second plus 1 over the third. So that's the second thing we're going to do. Oh, got another latecomer. Let's see here. Got a note? So we're going to try and find the total resistance. Then we're going to try and find the total current. And to do that, almost always we're going to use V total equals I total, R total. And then we're going to walk our ski rule, Kirchhoff's rules. We're going to walk through the circuit filling in what we can. So example one, and Sally, again, this is great practice for the question you asked me. It says, identify the resistors in series or in parallel. Well, those two are in parallel, right? And then if I went one over this plus one over this and then took the reciprocal, then I would have this and whatever equivalent resistance this is, Gordon, would be in series. And I could just add them up and find the total. What about here? Uh, which resistors are in series in this second one? Can you see them? You know what? Let's give these names. Let's call this R1, R2, R3, R4, and R5. Which of those are in series? 3, 4, and 5 are in series. In other words, Dylan, if I wanted to just combine this as a single resistor, I could just add those three up. 
then these two, the, this one and my mystery combined resistor would be in parallel. I could go one over this plus one over this and get a parallel, combine it with that, and then I could get a single solitary little resistor and go V total equals I total, R total. What would you say these two are, series or parallel? Parallel. What would you say these two are, series or parallel? Parallel. So hopefully that helps you spot the difference between them. Now we need to practice the actual math, the actual physics, the actual solving of the circuit. Oh, no, I got one more still. Okay. So what we're going to do for this one instead as a little twist is I'm going to write up here, find our total. And I'm going to make up numbers. These numbers almost certainly will be yucky. I'm going to say that this is 10 ohms. I'm going to say that this is 8 ohms and 4 ohms. And I'm going to say that this is trying desperately to do some math in my head hoping desperately to make this work out evenly. I doubt it, though. I'll call this 18 ohms. How could I write that as a single solitary resistor? Well, the first thing I would do is anywhere that's in series, I would probably combine those. Can you see any that are in series right now? Sorry? the 8 and 4, and in fact, what I would probably do is I would probably, if I could change colors, or I might, you know what, you guys can't change colors, I would guess I would probably quickly re-sketch this, and I would say, right now I have, and I would draw it pretty small, 10, oh, 10, Mr. Duick, and I would get really sloppy. I wouldn't even put the resistor symbol in there. i just put a 10 right there, and then I would say I got a 12, and I got an 18. Now I see, I think I have two resistors in parallel. Can you see them? Which two, Tyler? So I would say 1 over R parallel equals 1 over 12 plus 1 over 18, and I would bust out my calculator. This is what I was trying desperately to make work out evenly, but I doubt it will. 1 over 12 plus 1 over 18. And again, the most common mistake... Uh, Kieran, is kids think, oh, that's our parallel. No, 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 no. That's one over our parallel. So I've busted out my calculator. You guys might want to get yours out and follow along. Just a thought. Where's your calculator? I was working my way up to that. So where's your calculator? Not here. Where's your papers? Not here. Where's your binder? You know, it's, you got to let me crescendo to it, okay? Build up to it, yeah, okay. So our reciprocal. Oh, that's not bad. I thought it was going to be a long... Usually they're repeating yucky decimals. This one's actually not too bad. So this is the same as a single 7.2 ohm resistor. In other words, and here's where I would really start mucking up my scratch diagram over on the side here. I would say, hey, that's the same as a single 7.2. Because now I can tell you our total. This 7.2 is in series with this 10 now. Now I could say our total is going to be 17.2 ohms. And I can deal with whatever I need to deal with. Boy, those numbers actually worked okay. Jordan, does that make sense? That's how we're going to handle these. Now, all along, we're always trying to look for shortcuts. If they tell me total current, then probably I don't need to necessarily, I might not even need to rewrite everything. Or is there some resistors that have two op two things? Because if I know two, I know four. Um, but if they give me something bare bones, like example two, where it says find all voltages and currents, and there's nowhere where they've told me two things, and there's nowhere where they've told me total current, then 
I've got to fall back on, rewrite this as a single solitary resistor and use V equals I times R. So let's try this. It says find all voltages and currents, draw a summary diagram. I think the first thing that I would like to do is I would like to combine this as a single, these two parallels as a single solitary resistor. So the work that I show for this, Justin, I go 1 over R parallel equals 1 over 10 plus 1 over 15. I draw a little arrow and I write R parallel equals. So on your calculators, assuming you have them here, Oh, that's nice. Six, yes. So right now, here is my equivalent circuit. And eventually, probably, you'll stop redrawing them. You'll get good enough to keep track of stuff in your head. And if you do, fine. But for now, I'm going to say, right now, I have 20 volts. And I've told you, I get sloppy. I just put the resistor in like that. And what are these parallel resistors the same as? Six. I got a four and I got a six. Sally, these two resistors in series or in parallel? Now, this resistor, this six, isn't actually part of the circuit, but it is the equivalent mathematical of those two. By the way, look up. How big was this resistor? Not a trick question. Megan, how big? 15. How big? Anytime you're combining parallels, your answer will always be smaller than the smallest resistor. There's a built-in error check. I knew this is going to be less than 10. Always will be. So, oh, and you know what? If I combined a 2-ohm resistor right there, so now I have 3 in parallel, it would be 1 over 10 plus 1 over 15 plus 1 over 2. You know what? The answer is going to be smaller than 2. Try it if you want to. Go 1 over 10 plus 1 over 15 plus 1 over 2 and then take the reciprocal. Guarantee it's smaller than 2. It's a built-in error check along the way. So here's my question, Megan. What's my total resistance? You see it? These two are in series. So what's my total resistance? 10. I can now say, okay, our total is 10 ohms. And I know the total voltage. They did tell me the chair lift that battery. 20. So I total equal, well, actually, you guys haven't probably memorized stuff yet because some of you haven't done the homework. V equals I times R, except we're talking total, total, and total. And I've said to you, once we find the total current, these usually fall apart. Let's see. Um, oh, how would I find the total current? Get the IT by the total by itself, the current by itself. Mitchell, current by itself, what is it? I equals... I equals V total over R total. And this one's really nice. If I make these up, they won't work out nice because it's yucky math. 20 over 10. How many amps are there? Two. Now, since this is part of one of the things they asked me to find, I'll go sig figs just to be careful. And I'll go uh, two amps. I'll draw a box around it. So, Gordon, that means how many amps are right here? Two. How many amps are right here? How many amps are right here? If I, and if I know two, I know three. Uh, what's the voltage drop going through this resistor? How many volts do I lose? Eight. Now, it looks like if I'm a skier, I can go down this ski hill, and then if I hang a right, I can go down this ski hill and end up at the bottom. How many volts must I lose going through this particular resistor? Gordon, got to be 12. Oh, if I know 2, I know 3. What's the current? 1.2? Is that right? Point 0.8 over here, because the skier's got to split up.
If I know 2, I know 3. If I go, oh, you know what? I don't need to go I times R because can I not go through this ski hill and end up at the bottom? Or better yet, are these two, can we not shake hands and meet up? What must the height of this resistor be? Also 12 volts. Has to be. Oh, and can I tell you the wattage now? Uh, yeah, 12 times 0 0.8 and uh, 12 times 1.2 and uh, 8 times 2. I could tell you if these were bulbs, which bulb was brighter? Because brighter wattage is brighter bulb. That would be actually, a, to me, a nice question. Would be giving you something like this, and instead of saying, find everything, I could say, call this bulb 1, bulb 2, bulb 3. Which one is brighter? And prove it. Well, you're going to have to find everything to prove it. Usually what they'll do, though, is they'll say, uh, find the current in this resistor, which you'd have to find everything else to get there anyways. Okay. Example three. Find all voltages and currents, it says, and draw a summary diagram. Again, drawing a summary diagram, some of you will reach the point where you don't need to redraw the circuit. You can kind of keep track of stuff. That's fine. I think the first thing that I would look for whenever possible is, are there any resistors in series? Are there any resistors in series? Okay, so Gordon, I think mathematically I can redraw this as a 6 ohm right there, a 5 right there, and... What's this whole set of hills the same as? 12, 6, and 2. 20. Yes? And then, Jordan, I think these two are in parallel. So I'm quickly going to go 1 over our parallel equals 1 over 5 plus 1 over 20. Oh, don't put an equal sign there, Mr. Dewitt, because you're flipping it. They're technically not equal yet. 1 over 5 and 1 over 20. Well, <coughs> I'm good at fractions, but even first thing in the morning, I'm not going to try that. 4? Four? 4 ohms? And this is where, if you wanted to, this is our scratch diagram. I've tried to keep my original circuit clean. If you wanted to, Regan, you could redraw it. Or what are these two combined the same as, Regan? You know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to go scribble, 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 and I'm going to put a little 4 right there and say that's my new circuit. If you're looking for shortcuts. Because now I think I can tell you the total resistance. What is the total resistance? 10. What is the total current? I think it's going to be 30 divided by 10. Total current is, uh, Mr. Duick, go to two sig figs just in case, 3.0 amps. And now we use Kirchhoff's laws. Start at the chairlift, usually. Sally, what's the current right here? Three amps. Oh, hey, what's the current right here? Let's write that down. Do I know two? I know three. What's the voltage drop going through this resistor? 30? I don't think so. I'll go I times R, right? V equals I times R. We know I. We know current. We know resistance. It's got to be. couldn't be 30. Otherwise, the skiers couldn't go down these next few hills. There wouldn't be enough voltage. So I agree, 18 volts. Um, this 5 ohm resistor, what's the voltage drop going through here? Let's see. Brendan. It's got to be 12 because I can get to the ground from there, can't I? So I'll put a little 12 volts. Uh, if I know 2, I know 3. What's the current in this particular resistor? Uh, 12 divided by 5 2.2? 2.4, that's what I said. 
2.4 amps. Oh, my total current was 3 amps. How many amps going through here then? 0 0.6, 0 0.6, 0 0.6 amps. Now the voltage drop in each of these is not 12 volts. Oh, but they're going to add to 12 volts because these three small hills have to equal this great big hill. Uh, I times R, I times R, I times R. What's the voltage drop through the first resistor? 7.2 volts. Voltage drop through here, 3.6. Voltage drop through here, 1.2. Double check, do those three add together to give me 12 volts? Uh, yeah, oh, great. Oh, what if they wanted the power loss in one of these? Let's see, uh, I times, or V times I, 18 times three. I'm willing to bet this is the brightest bulb, 54 watts, but let's see. Uh, 7.2 times 0.6, yeah. 3.6 times 0.6, yeah. 1.2 times 0.6, yeah. Oh, what's the dim? What's the what's the dimmest bulb here? Justin says my mom says I'm the dimmest. No, 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 no. I mean in the circuit here. Yeah, not the not the brightest bulb on the tree. Um, I think. The, whoop, sorry. This one's the dimmest one. 0.72 watts. Right. Not very bright at all. Where? How many amps total? No, how many amps total? Three. They split up here. How many went down this way? Because we knew we figured out the 12 volts. We knew 2.4. Must mean 0.6 skiers went that way, right? Kirchhoff's laws. Really, when you wrap your brain around them, Tyler, really nice. It's one of those, boy, circuits really could have been ugly. Actually, the rules are pretty clean. Oh, also, you'll notice um, using the old method that I used to teach, the non-skier method, systems, I did need about this much room to solve everything. We're now, we're doing most of the math almost in our head. We're getting a few things here, and then it's fill in the blanks. So thank you. That was the teacher that I was with over at SRT on Thursday. He's the one that gave me this method, and I say to him, thank you very much. So here's a using principles of physics right to explain kind of a question. And yes, there's going to be one of these on your test, a using principles of physics question. One of the questions they love to ask in circuits is, hey, what if you add a switch and close a switch? So what happens to the total current in this circuit as measured by the ammeter when the switch is closed? Well, total current is total voltage divided by total resistance. Now, I don't think our total voltage is going to change. That's the chairlift. We're stuck with 100 volts. Whether this switch is open or closed, doesn't matter. We're stuck with 100 volts. So the real question is, when this switch closes, what happens to my resistance? Does it get bigger overall or smaller? overall. Now a lot of students would say, oh, you're adding it when you shut this switch, Dylan, you're adding an extra ski hill, you're adding an extra resistor. I think it gets bigger. Let's find out. Let's do a before. Before, I think I only have two resistors and I think, Evan, they're both in parallel because before I close the switch, all the skiers have to go through this one and this one. Sorry, did I say parallel? Series. They're both in series. I think before my total resistance is 25 ohms. When I close the switch, what's my total resistance? Well, I have these two in parallel. Let's find the equivalent of those two. It's going to be 1 divided by 5 plus 1 divided by 10. Reciprocal. 
oh, plus this 20 ohm here, when it's closed, our total is 20 plus 3.3 .3 repeating, it's 23.3 .3 ohms. So as it turns out, and this is very strange, but this is true, if you add a resistor, if it's in parallel, you're lowering the overall resistance. Actually, Megan, that kind of makes sense because actually what you're doing, even though you're adding a resistor, you're giving the skiers an extra hill to go down. We can fit more skiers on our, our ski slopes. So if this gets smaller, if this gets smaller, <coughs> our total decreases. V total is constant. Therefore, what happens to I total? Stays the same, increases, or decreases? Increases. In fact, it goes from 4 amps to whatever 100 divided by 20. Well, I can do that. 100 divided by. It goes from 4 amps to 4.3 amps. So if these were light bulbs, strangely enough, when you close this switch, this bulb would get brighter. Uh, this one would get dimmer because now it's splitting current with this one. And if you don't believe me, you can actually, well, initially there's four amps going through here. When it's closed, you can work out how much current was going through there if you wanted to. It's less current. So shut the switch, dimmer, dimmer, brighter. Homework. Number one. Two. Three. Four. Five. So, so far, everything. Number six is a nice twist. Instead of giving you the chairlift, I'm saying find the chairlift. Oh, I do notice over here they gave me two things. That's probably going to be my plan of attack. If I know two, I know three. I know four, as a matter of fact. And what else can I get from there? So six is good. Yeah, seven, eight. Am I going to assign them all? Let's see. Nine, air resistance, which is nice review, but I won't worry about number nine. So right now, one through eight. It's a short lesson. What we're also going to do today is go through our electrostatics test, finally.